Top five do's and don'ts for parents of kids with ADHD. That's the name they gave me. Hi, I'm Ryan, ADHD Dude. This is my dog, Flora. And I want to start off by telling you my top five don'ts for parents of kids with ADHD. Number one, don't just go by the recommendation that your pediatrician or school counselor or whomever gave you. Here's the reason why. Most professionals are not familiar with the American Academy of Pediatrics treatment recommendations for ADHD. Those treatment recommendations include, for children over six, medication management in conjunction with parent behavior training. That's the part I do and that is offered in the ADHD Dude membership site. As a result of a lot of professionals not knowing the treatment recommendations, they often refer families to individual therapy for kids, which is not a recommended treatment for ADHD. And as many families who I've worked with have shared, is not really effective in addressing ADHD related challenges as well. So make sure to check out the American Academy of Pediatrics treatment recommendations. Again, for children over six, medication management in conjunction with parent behavior training. For children under six, the recommendation is start with parent behavior training and then look at the medication management piece as well. Number two, don't do things for your kids that they can do themselves. You know, one of the things I often see with parents of kids with ADHD is because they get in the habit of doing a lot of prompting and because a lot of kids with ADHD are very skilled at learned helplessness and emotional manipulation of their parents, what happens is parents start to overcompensate by doing things for their kids they can do themselves and they actually start really kind of treating them like a much younger child. So what happens is when you do that, number one, you're enabling overdependence on you, but more importantly, you're denying them the opportunity to develop their executive function skills. And most importantly, you're denying them the opportunity to develop the self-confidence that comes from recognizing you can do something on your own. So please do not do things for your children they can learn to do for themselves. Please do not make them overdependent on you by doing too much for them. Number three, please don't take advice from random people in Facebook parent to parent support groups or ADHD parent support groups. And here's the reason why. I see a tremendous amount of misinformation being spread in Facebook parent support groups and Facebook parent ADHD groups. And I especially don't like seeing parents who are not licensed medical professionals give medical advice to other parents. And even if they were a licensed medical professional, that's still not something you're supposed to do. So please do not take advice from random people who you don't know. Look, there's a lot of people who are trying to be helpful in those groups and I appreciate that. But there's also a lot of people who just love sharing their opinions and telling other people how to parent and who really don't know any more about ADHD than you do. Number four, please don't buy into all these gimmicks that are marketed to parents of kids with ADHD. Look, there's a lot of kids with ADHD out there and there's a lot of parents who are looking for a quick fix or an easy way to deal with this. So as a result, there's a lot of gimmicks out there, a lot of different programs that really just try to separate parents from their money and say, we're gonna cure your child's ADHD or we're gonna fix it or do whatever. Or here's a gimmick that you, know, you can use and they don't have to take medication. Here's what I want you to know. None of these gimmicks have really shown efficacy. Sure, some have illustrated some data showing that they can help increase attention span for a little bit. But at the end of the day, is that really your biggest struggle is your child's attention span? Or is it their lagging executive function skills or their behavior or their social skills? So please do your research first because I see so many things advertised on Facebook and Instagram for parents of kids with ADHD and the vast majority of them are just gimmicks or quick fixes that really don't work. There's a lot of medications out there for kids with ADHD and you have to talk with a licensed medical professional and it might take months or even a year or longer to find one that works. So if one medication or even two didn't work out, that doesn't mean there isn't one that's going to work beautifully for your son or daughter. So please keep that in mind and always consult with a licensed medical professional about this. Here are my top five do's for parents of kids with ADHD. Number one, please follow the treatment recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics. And again, those treatment recommendations are for children under six, parent behavior training first, followed by medication management. For children six and up, their treatment recommendation is medication management in conjunction with parent behavior training, the part that I do, that is offered in the ADHD Dude membership site. The reason I feel strongly about the AAP treatment recommendations is because the parent behavior training piece provides a scaffolding that kids need to develop skills and the medication piece just supplements that. They really work beautifully when worked in conjunction with each other, so please keep that in mind. Number two, do change the way you use language to help your child build their self-directed talk, what I call brain coach with kids, and to help them build executive functioning and also improve behavior. 
you know, the way we use language is something that is not addressed in the mental health field's approach to ADHD. It's not something I think most mental health professionals are aware of, but it is critically important to helping kids improve their executive functioning and their behavior. So let me give you an example. If you want your child to move from prompt dependence, prompt dependence meaning you have to say, do this, do that, remind them of everything. You know, when your child is prompt dependent on you, that means you are acting as their executive functioning. The way we move kids from prompt dependence towards independence is shifting the way we use language using declarative language in order to help build their self-directed talk or their internal dialogue. And when you do that, what happens is you're building that internal dialogue, which is lagging anyway. So you're really not just helping them build executive functioning, you're helping them build one of the skills that is lagging in kids with ADHD. Shifting the way you use language is something that is covered in the ADHD Dude membership site. In webinar one of Executive Function Crash Course for Parents, that's the subject of that webinar. And I also cover it in Scaffolding Better Behavior and Self-Confidence. Number three, do put scaffolding in place to help develop skills. Parents often reach out to me asking me if I can work individually with their child. And what I explain to them is, that's really not the most effective thing to do. And because I follow the American Academy of Pediatric Treatment recommendations, what I explain to parents is, the majority of work I do is with parents or with parents and kids together to help parents understand how to put that scaffolding in place to help their kids build skills. I created the ADHD Dude membership site because I wanted all families to have an affordable way to be able to help their child build skills without meeting with me individually. So please make sure to check that out because it's really gonna give you the scaffolding you need to help your child build skills, which in turn is gonna help them build their self-confidence. Number four, connect past successes with things in the present or near future to help build confidence and teach your kids their abilities. One of the things that kids with ADHD struggle with is something called episodic memory. Episodic memory is the way we recall past events and the emotions associated with those events and apply that information to the present or the future. Let me give you an example. Let's say your son or daughter is really nervous about doing a new activity they've never done before. What you can do is use language like this, say, you know, remember last year when you tried, I'm just gonna make something up, when you tried basketball and you were really nervous at first and you didn't think you were going to like it, well, after you went the first time, you really liked the kids and you had fun. This is going to be the same but different. It's a new activity, volleyball, but it's just a different sport. When we connect past successes with things in the present or near future, what we're helping kids to see is that they're able to do things even if they're a little bit nervous or hesitant. And that's really important because really for kids with ADHD, they tend to not remember these things unless there's a strong negative emotion attached. So you might think, well, why aren't they remembering things that they felt good about or did well with? The reason is they just really don't and that's why we have to help them build their episodic memory to help them realize their strengths and their abilities. Number five, and this one's really important to me, please make sure your kids have time for unstructured play and hanging out where you're not hovering or directing things. The reason why is the way kids naturally build executive function skills and social skills is through unstructured play and hanging out where adults are not directing things. That's really important. The other part of this is, please make sure your kids are involved in some type of activities, whether that's youth group, an activity at school, whatever it may be, because being able to engage with other kids in real life and do something fun and build memories is so important. What I teach kids is that you can't go through life just playing video games and you can't go through life just interacting with people through video games. Because as you get older, what's going to happen is people are gonna to wanna to spend time with you in real life and if you say no to that, well, they're eventually gonna stop asking. So please really push activities, you know, whatever it may be in real life, with other kids their age because that's really important. All right, I hope these do's and don'ts were helpful and feel free to leave any questions or comments and I will speak to you soon. Take care.